Hello, my name is Bill and welcome to Mind Your Crypto. Today we have a simple strategy so you can all understand and it works very, very good in identifying tops and bottoms for crypto. Before we begin, I hope that you're having a fantastic day and do not forget to join our monthly subscription partner slash Mind Your Crypto. You will get easy profits, you will make easy, easy money. Join us and you won't regret it. Thank you for watching. Have a fantastic day wherever you are. Let's go right now and see the strategy. So what we need is two tools, right? I'm going to close the volume as well. We need Williams R, RSI, and maybe we are going to use the EMAs as well, exponential moving averages. And of course, before we begin with the strategy, we need to actually see what every tool is doing. So you all know relative strength index, right? Whenever we have an oversold situation, this means that the yellow line will go down from this purple zone right here, and we have an oversold situation right there. Now, on the settings, I have clearly set myself the style, right? Actually, here it is, the settings of the RSI. I have the style with the yellow line, and of course, the purple background. I have changed that, so the, your default settings should be different colors. But the idea is the same, right? Whenever we are down from the 30, which is a bottom line, we have an oversold situation. So we expect the price to pump. Whenever we go above the 70, we have an overbought situation right here. Okay. And whenever we go there, we expect the price to fall down. Now, is this the case for all the cases, right? Is this what is happening every time with the price? No. In particular, we might be having an overbought, but the price keeps going higher. So what do we need to see is, for example, a bearish RSI divergence, just like that, where we have a lower high in the RSI. You can see that, right? A lower high and then a higher high in the price that causes a bearish RSI divergence. And look how beautifully then we went all the way down for V chain. Okay. So perhaps what we are going to see actually is we are going to use this tool, the bearish and the bullish RSA divergence, along with the Williams R. Now, Williams R is something similar that the RSI. Um, and we are seeing similar things. For example, we have seen Williams bearish RSA divergence, right? Or bullish RSA divergence. We are seeing the same as the RSI, except that Williams R is very sensitive to the price action and it I can identify better sometimes the bearish and the bullish divergences. Yeah, Williams are can identify better than the RSI. Important thing right here. And of course, what do we have right now is that the bottom line is at the minus 80 and the top line is at the minus 20. But we have the same idea. Whenever we go down oversold, whenever we go up overbought. So too many buyers have stepped in and now we need the price to go down. So you can go into the settings. You can choose to input the length, the days. I have 14, the source close, right? You can have the high, low close uh, divided by three, the open high, low close divided by four or whatever case you like. I use the close mostly and the length, the 14 days. I use the same with the RSI. So it is important to use the same days. So if you move um, the Williams R to 20 days, then move the RSI into 20 days as well. Here is the style. You can change the color. You can change the upper band, the lower band, right? Okay, you can put minus 81, minus 82, the lower band. That means if you had the lower band, for example, right here, then you would minimize the risk because what you would do is that you would buy in this situation right here and not in this in this but you would miss many buying opportunities as well so it is up to you to decide anyway for now for the williams r what do we need to see is very very some very nice things first of all okay so we all know that the williams r okay is basically very very sensitive to the price action so it goes quicker into an oversold. You can clearly see back here for VTain, for example, when we were up here on 15 March 2022, you realize that, and if I put the support line right here, you realize that first we hold a very, very huge support line. Okay. Secondly, what do we have is that the RSA was not in an oversold. Okay. So we did not have an RSA in an oversold, but we had a higher low pattern right here with the same low and a little bit of a lower low. Very, very bullish. Okay. And with the Williams R, we had a bullish RSI divergence. Bullish Williams R divergence actually coming in from these two lines. So we had oversold situation here and we had an 
divergence as well. So we were down from the 20 day MA, but in overall, you can see that the price and the price action was into a sideways movement. Okay, we had an uptrend right here, but at the same time, we corrected and we want to see if this would lead to a further down correction right here or if this would be to go further upwards. For example, if we were to go to the daily frame, okay, and we go back here on 23rd March around here where we were, okay. So if you were see if you were to see this action right here, okay, you would suggest that we are going all the way up, down, right? Or all the way up. At the same time though we had the Williams R into a not oversold situation, at the same time uh, overbought or overbought, and at the same time the RSI was good. And the 20 day MA was then our support line, right? So the 20 day MA was our support level back here on 23rd March. Okay, so you can see, sorry, it wasn't 23rd, it was 14, 13 March. That's why I was confused before because I thought that it was 23rd March. So you can see 13 March right here, okay? Clearly oversold situation on the daily frame as well. And clearly, if you check it out, you will see that from this close, we also had a RSI divergence. Actually, Williams R divergence from this close right here. You can see that, right? Okay, so we had a Williams R divergence. Even if we take this close right here, look at that. Okay, 21 February. 21 February was this price. So we had a clear bullish RSI uh, Williams are divergence. And as well, we didn't see something crazily good with the RSI. I mean that, yes, we had a higher low, but we cannot assume that we had a bullish RSI since we didn't have an oversold situation. Usually when we have an oversold, we assume that we have a bullish RSI. But anyway, there you can see that with the Williams R, we found crazily, crazily good the higher low pattern and therefore on the daily frame as well we were ready to fly and on the four hour frame if we would go back all the way here okay you can see and you can find out that around this area we had on the four hour frame as well some higher lows right here well we had the same lows higher lows in the williams are so therefore this is an entry point okay whenever you see that and it is on the daily frame and on the four hour frame good we have some good clear indications that we are going upwards be sure that most of the times we are going to see the subtrend however because sometimes strategies fail what you need to do is to set a very very nice stop loss okay so i'm assuming that you all know what stop loss is uh you will get liquidated once this price for example let's say that you buy here and you st set your stop loss near this zone right here then what you're going to do is if the price is going to go down there you get liquidated and you lose like a minus two percent it is better to lose a minus two than to go all the way down losing a minus 50 percent right so therefore you could put a, always a stop loss but most of the times this works whenever you have higher lows and at the same time you are having lower lows or the same lows in the RSI and the Williams R, and you see it both on the four hour frame and on the daily frame, this is a clear entry zone with a very minimized risk. Um, now you will see something very, very beautiful. Okay, and you will see that what did we have right here is that we are having a clear, clear bearish RSI divergence kicking off. So, for example, what is a bearish RSI divergence? It is the opposite as of bullies. Lower highs in the RSI now. And at the same time, we have higher highs in the price. At the bullish RSI divergence, we have higher lows in the RSI, like here, and lower lows in the price. Okay, so the sellers are tired. Right now, the buyers were tired, and we had an indication that most likely we are going to fail, and we are going to go all the way, all the way down. Okay, so you can see that the RSI sometimes plays better. Sometimes it is the Williams R that plays better. For example, right here, look at that. We had an overbought situation kicking off. At the same time, we had this lower high pattern that we were talking about, and we had a higher high in the price. But you can see on the daily frame, for example, we did not have an overbought situation kicking off. Okay, so we couldn't we couldn't assume that we are having a huge, huge a risk with the um with the RSI. But going back to the Williams R, then we were already in an overbought, and this should help us into selling. Okay, what Williams R is doing 
very, very good, it is. Except of finding the birds and the uh, bullish divergences, it is finding very, very good the tops and the bottoms because it is quicker to go into an overbought and into an oversold. And in a sideways market, in a normal market, for example, where we do not have a crazy impulsive wave or a crazy downtrend, this helps us so much into exiting fast without a single loss right here for example for vitsane should be the case but here everyone was talking about vitsane going all the way to the moon and finally getting back again above the point 15 which should not be the case for vitsane okay for our frame right here lower highs higher highs in the rsi as well you can see right now that we have higher lows in the rsi with the rsi rate here and a little bit look at that okay we had the lower low and the higher low in the rsi however we always have to use the emas and this is what i want to talk about right now so look at that okay so bill you're telling me that every time we're having a higher low we should be going in right no in particular right here we had a bullish rsi divergence and what happened is though if you go to the daily frame actually let's go to the four hour frame again so it was between 7 april and 12 april right if we go back here on 7 april and 12 april okay you will realize something that here we had the rsi in the middle so we didn't didn't have a noble situation right here at the same time on the 7 april right there we had even the williams are into not in an oversold on 12 april yes it went down into an oversold but it was the first time so on the daily frame we weren't good to get in right we weren't actually very very good to get in but if we go to the four hour frame okay and you see that you see the lower low and the higher low in the other side then you anticipate the price to move up and this is what we did right we moved upwards but we didn't do anything dramatical right here we didn't do anything crazy actually not dramatical what i mean by that is that we pumped 12 percent, but that's it this is where the emas play out you should always be having the 20-day ema and the 50-day ema if you type exponential moving average indicator right here you should be taking out that we have the moving average exponential and you should always go into the settings and on the epoons have the 20 on the length and the 50 on the length as well and what we are seeing right now is that once we go right here in a bearish market or we go a little bit above the 50 day ma we always have always always have a selling pressure okay so perhaps whenever you see the williams are into an overbought as well look at that williams are into an overbought but at the same time the rsa was not so therefore we didn't have a high risk with the rsa but with the williams are we had same happened here right look at this action right there we had the same the higher low and we had an overbought situation but with the rsi we didn't have something the yellow line the yellow line was not above the 70 okay so perhaps yeah we should be going further down every time into a bearish market into a downtrend this is going right down all the way and you will ask me bill when this downtrend is ending whenever we see something bullish on the daily frame or on the weekly frame sometimes we have to wait even the weekly frame as well but you can see for example on the weekly frame that we might be having with the williams r a very nice rsi actually williams are i'm always getting confused with that it's okay um williams are divergence okay higher low right here look at that we are in an oversold and we might be seeing something beautiful really really soon enough sometimes though um in case that the rsa doesn't go down below the 30 on the weekly even yeah we have that sometimes we need to wait for the rsa to go down from the 30 then the bear market won't stop especially when we are into the recession when we are into a recession like now what you should be focusing on is the weekly not the daily end of the four hour frame this is when the bearish market would end right when you focus on the weekly frame and maybe on the monthly frame and you should be focusing more on the targets right now for example on the weekly frame what did we have is the emas that we talked about look at that right we didn't have the williams r into an overbought we didn't have the rsa into an overbought however we approached in a downtrend after we had the bearish cross with the 20 day ma and the 50 day ma the price rejected from the 50 day ma and therefore we had a selling pressure due to the fact that we approached the 50 day ma on the weekly frame so we should be seeing 
all the time frames that we should be having always our EMAs with us because we might have some hidden information that we do not get with the other tools. So in an uptrend, what you're doing is you're getting easier into a buying pressure. For example, look at that. In an uptrend, for example, the opposite of a downtrend, okay, what we had is we broke above, we had 50-day EMA as a support level while we had a, an oversold situation on the weekly frame on the Williams R. Okay, so in particular, this means that this is crazily bullish on the weekly frame. So this means that we are holding 50 day MA as support level. We are on, Williams are into an oversold situation. At the same time, we are going even, even higher. And this means that, of course, for the crypto asset that it would go all the way up. So it is important to check always. For example, when we are in an uptrend, look at that. Whenever we go below the 50-day MA, we usually have a buying opportunity. Or whenever we touch the 50-day MA, look at how beautifully we touch the 50-day MA and this time we had a, no, uh, no, a buying opportunity. Despite the fact that maybe, look at that, Williams R wasn't in an oversold all the other side but here we had a crazy oversold situation so if you waited then you would see that this was a crazy crazily good buying opportunity and we should be going even but higher and again right here downtrend correction holding the fifth day may williams are into an overbought and then oversold sorry and then we had a crazy buying opportunity. So perhaps it is easier to buy than in an uptrend than it is easier to buy in a downtrend. Look at that, uh, crazily, crazily overbought situations. And we had also right here a bearish, a bearish divergence, Williams R divergence. Okay, look at these lines right here. While on the RSI, we didn't have a bearish RSI, for example, right? You can see higher high instead of a lower high. So therefore, Williams R helped so much with identifying the RSI or the divergences actually, okay, and so we should be having a very, very nice uptrend whenever we see the Williams are with a bullish uh, divergence or if they both confirm something, if these two indicators confirm something and we are good on the weekly frame as well, then we are absolutely set to go higher. Do not forget to join our monthly subscription. I hope that you enjoyed this video and of course I'm going through more of these videos. Thank you and see you soon. Bye.